Now this thing you can still slide through. Here I'm using a cobra weave for a two strand option. If you don't want to do the entire section of cord, you can do wraps every few inches or so. Here's an option you can use if you have multiple cables you want to fasten to a wall. I'd also like to send a big shout out to Rick in Illinois. He sent me these two items. More about that at the end of the video. You can't manage your cables if you don't have any. And that's what was happening to me. I normally keep a phone charger on my desk, but one of my four kids kept on taking it. And so what I ended up doing is designing and 3D printing this big old bolt. I glued it onto my cord. And wouldn't you know it, the fact that I'm showing you this cord means that it works. But if you don't have a 3D printer, you can do the same idea with a monkey's fist. Let's start with the core of our monkey's fist. Now imagine if you took your piece of cord and tied it around in an overhand knot. That'd only be a single strand for our core, but we want to do it twice. So I'm going to go around once and then twice. You can see the two right there. Now I'll go underneath and I'll tie our overhand knot. And now you see we have our double strand. I'll just pull that tight, trim the ends off. And there's our core for our monkey's fist. So you want it to be as wide as it is tall. Now I have about four feet of rope. I'll take it in my left hand and I'll point it towards me and I'll start wrapping clockwise once, twice. I want to be able to see two strands in front, two strands in back. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is pop it off. I'm going to wrap it around two times again, but this time I'm going to go counterclockwise once, twice. Again, I want to see two strands in front, two strands in the rear. And in order to make this nice, I want to take this side and poke it through the top. You don't want to go through this side because then what will end up happening is the rope will cross over and it won't look nice and finished. So go through the top and again we're going to go back to clockwise. I'm just going to keep threading it through those center coils there until I have two strands on top and two strands on bottom. There we go. You see two. Two in the back. All right, so we have our little monkey's fist formed up here. But what we need to do is run our cable through. And if you look, we have a window, a little window going all the way through. And that's where we're going to start threading our charging cord. So I'll place it right through, diagonally through my monkey's fist. And I'll keep pulling it until my core is settled in the middle. Now it's just a matter of pulling all the slack out of our monkey's fist. Now eventually it gets too difficult to pull up with your fingertips. And so you guessed it, this is where I use my trusty Marlin spike. This one does not have a Turk's head tied on it yet. All right, there we have it. Now we just need to trim our ends off. We want to leave enough so that when we apply our flame, we're not burning the rest of the monkey's fist. So I over tightened this thing with my Marlin spike, which is good because I'm going to add a little bit of slack as I push these back through to hide the ends. So I'll just push this a little bit here. Use my trusty Marlin spike to push it in. Now this thing you can still slide through. There we go, I'm gonna keep it right there. But there you have it, there's your monkey's fist right on your charging cord. And hopefully nobody steals it like they haven't stole that one. Here I'm using a Cobra Weave for a two strand option. This is for my iPad and phone on my nightstand. Of course, it's only gonna work if you have an awesome for sale sticker on it. Now these cords are two different lengths. 
So I ended up coiling the black one and just incorporating it into the weave. This is a 36 inch charging cable and I used about 20 feet of 275 nylon tactical cord. But I didn't like stretching my hands out so far during the weave so I actually connected it in two places here. I did it 10 feet at a time. For ease of demonstration I'm using a 5 foot section of my cord. Now you could use a 10 foot section like I did to do this one or if you don't want any seams use a 20 foot section. But I'll place the center of the cord in between the two cables. And I have my left side and right side. With my right side, I'm going to form a little loop and I'll point the cord to the left behind the audio jacks. With this side, I'm going to point it to the right, but this time I'm in front of the audio jacks. Okay, let me tighten this down a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Okay, now I have a window on each side. My right hand is going to poke through the window. Okay. And in the back, I'm also going to poke through the window, but I'm going to do that from the back. Okay. And now I'll just pull this tight and look what I end up with. This is the start of our Cobra weave. Okay. Now check this out. Every time I pull this tight, I'll have a cord that's pointing away from me and a cord that's pointing towards me. If the cord is pointing away from me, I want to pull it back towards me. If the cord is pointing towards me, I want to push it away, okay? And now I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'll take this end and I'll poke it through. I'll take this side and I'll poke it through. And then pull everything tight. Now you don't want it too tight because you'll have to adjust it once you're finished in the end. You just want to make it snug. Same thing, this cord is pointing towards me I want to push it away. This cord is pointing away from me. I want to pull it towards me. Okay. I have my two windows. This side is going to go back. This side is going to come forward and I'll pull it tight. Okay. Now, once you start getting the hang of it, you'll just do them both at the same time. Okay. And you'll pull it through. Adjust everything so that it's looking nice. Okay, this is where an anchor point comes in handy. So I have this little section of black paracord. I'm just gonna slip it through, wind it through just a little bit, and I'm gonna hook it on to my anvil and marlin spike. There we go. Now, if you're dealing with a real long section of cord, it may be easy to just place this in front and then take this side and we're just going to go back and through the loop. Okay. Let's do that again. This one's facing towards me. So I'm going to push it back. Okay. Now this one, I'm going to come from behind in front and through the loop. Now it may be difficult to see this, but as you get a hold and uh, understand the pattern, you'll see how you're supposed to weave this through. And if you mess up, then just undo it and resend it through. You see this? This doesn't look right. So let's undo it. Okay. There we go. If you need to add more cord to your weave and you plan on doing a fuse, make sure you have freshly cut ends before you melt your paracord. Dad, I don't like peaches cold. Mom, Dad. Give me a second, son. I don't like peaches cold. I like peaches regular. You don't like cold peaches? Yeah. All right, there we go. And that should be plenty strong. For what you're doing here. Now when you're done, just leave yourself a little bit of excess. 
you'll melt a bead down on the end of your cord. And I just use the cool part of my torch to flatten it out. Hold it there for a little bit so it solidifies. There we go. If you don't want to do the entire section of cord, you can do wraps every few inches or so. This is Micro 90, and I just whipped it like you would the end of a rope. Let me show you. Now back in the day, nylon rope didn't exist, so you couldn't just take a torch and try to melt it because it would just burn, right? So here's what they would do. They would take a piece of the rope and they would use it to whip it tight. So far, I pulled one strand out. Now what I'm gonna do is simply make a little loop here and I'll place it against the end of my rope, okay? And now I'm going to wrap the rope going downwards. I'll be doing it tightly, okay? Once I have a few wraps, what I'm gonna do is take the end that I was working with and run it through that loop. And since I was wrapping through everything, I still have this end up here that I can pull tight. Okay, there we go. And now my rope has a little check at the end to keep from fraying. I'll take about two feet of this Micro 90. Then I'll make my loop. I'll place this loop up against my cords and I'm gonna start wrapping downwards, overlapping that free end there. This one I'm gonna do five times. Two, three, four, five. Now I'll take the end that I was wrapping with, I'll just run it right through that loop. And in order to do this properly, we want this cord to be pulled in to all our turns. Let me zoom in so you can see. So here we go, I'm collapsing my little loop to catch on to my end that I was wrapping. I wanna make sure that I pull it inside of all my turns. There we go. We don't wanna pull it too tight because then we don't want it to come out the other side. But now that it's in there, safe and stored, I'm simply gonna cut it right off. For something this small, I like to use a razor blade because I can place the razor blade right up against and cut it very close. Here's an option you can use if you have multiple cables you want to fasten to a wall. Now this uses cow hitches in series, and the nice thing about this is you can make it as long as you want, and you can tack it to the wall using the loops that you tied in. So imagine these are the cables that I'm going to stitch in, and here's the rope that I'm going to do it with. If I have an object that I'm going to tie it to, I could go ahead and do an overhand loop, meaning I'm doing an action like I'm turning on a car. I'll do an overhand loop, and I'll take that loop and throw it on top. Okay, I'll do it again, overhand loop, throw it on top, okay? And now I'll take my cord, place it, overhand loop, throw it on top, do that again, overhand loop, throw it on top, okay? Take my cord. Now what's happening here is every time I'm doing this overhand loop, I'm starting a spiral. And I don't want this thing to be a spiral, I want it to be nice and flat. So here's what we're going to do to fix that. So to keep things nice and straight, I'm just going to alternate the loops that I do. I'll start by turning on the car, or overhand loop, throw it on top. Turn off the car, underhand loop, throw it on top. Okay. Now I'll get my cable, place it in, wax on, wax off. Let's get our next cable, throw it on, wax on, wax off, okay? Last one, overhand, underhand, okay? 
Now check that out. All our cables are nice and straight. But we don't want an extension on our wall, so let me show you how to do this with just the paracord. What I'm going to do is start with a loop, just like that, and I'll do the same thing. Overhand loop, throw it over the top, and I'll pull it tight. Okay. Now I'll do underhand, throw it over the top, and pull it tight. Okay. Let's start bringing in our cables. Here's one. Make sure it's nice and tight. Next cable. Overhand. Underhand. Next cable. Overhand. Underhand. Last one. Okay. Now before you pull this tight, you can go through and tighten it all up. This looks pretty good for me. And so what I'm gonna do is take this free end here and I'm just going to poke it through that little loop that I started with, okay? And I'll pull my opposite end and watch what happens with that loop. It starts to collapse and it gathers up that end that I was working with, okay? Now when it's time to anchor this to the wall, I'll use these loops on either side and I'll just take a little nail and I'll place it through. So Rick is into decorative knotting he is light years above what I can do. It starts off with a diamond knot here at the top by the key ring, and then you have a 21 part, six bite, three pass gotcho fan knot finished with a five strand Matthew Walker knot. Super impressive. Here we have a donut that he made from a styrofoam ring covered in black gaffer's tape, and then he used four millimeter hemp cord. He said it can be used as a floating key ring if I have a boat which I don't, but I do have a pool, so we're about to test this out. And Rick, I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna share this part of the letter with all our viewers so that they can see the different decorative knots that they can get into. Thanks again, Rick.